please f find time, f you know, find space on that side. <laughs> Okay. Oh, good. Yeah, so that we can make it easy for those that are gonna come late, comrade. Hey. <laughs> I'm I'm try I'm trying to to keep it away, but hey. It's my guy. Hey, good evening, Makabane. Good evening, friends, colleagues. Uh, I want to welcome you to the first of our four-part series where we are commemorating 50 years of how Europe underdeveloped Africa a seminal book that changed how scholarship looked at Africa. As Chisiman, we are very pleased to host this event. Can you sort it out? Okay. Uh, comrades, this would be, this is the first of our offerings on this. And I think as Chisimane, it's important to state that as this center, we take history and contemporary politics very, very seriously, you know, because we think that is a basis of how to understand how power works and that can inform how we respond, you know, <coughs> having lived through the injustices for a long time. Uh, today is the 13th of June. Exactly 42 years ago to the day, a great revolutionary, a people's intellectual, and a great contributor to revolutionary thinking about emancipation of Africa was killed right on this day, 13th of June, 1980, Walter Rodden was assassinated. Instead of us saying, <coughs> let's have a moment of silence, I think that would be very inappropriate because his book broke a major silence about the geopolitical relation between Africa and Europe. So if we have to do anything, I would encourage us to make a very big noise instead of saying, let's have a moment of silence. We've been silenced a lot, you see. So <coughs> comrades, today we are acknowledging this revolutionary uh, also we are acknowledging that this is, rather, instead of being a moment of silence, it's a moment of introspection about our own history, our role in shaping it, and how we move forward with our struggles. It's honoring a great legacy that Walter Rodney left us. Uh, in how we're gonna do this, we're gonna follow, the fol we're gonna follow this order. Uh, we're gonna today Today we are going to, to screen two not long pieces about Walter Rodney's life. The works that are done by Matthew Smith. Uh, after that, we will have a chance to speak to him. But Walter Rodney's legacy has a very respectable custodian, which is the Walter Rodney 
Foundation. So we're going to start today by following this order. Uh, we, <coughs> we are going to, to start by screening a message from the Walter Rodney Foundation, Patricia Rodney herself, who is going to be speaking to us, acknowledging us doing this today here in Cape Town. Comrade Vusi of the Walter Rodney Revolutionary Library in the Kauteng is here with us today. So we also have got custodians of Rodney's Lagas in this country. Comrade Vusi is going to come forward and introduce that message of support that is coming from Patricia Road. After that, we are going to introduce Matthew Smith, who made both these films, a historian, and we will also allow him to join us via Zoom and say a few words before we start to watch. Because I think it's important for people to get a sense of what we're expecting to watch, uh, that what is put together, these two films, one is called Disturbance 68, another one called Our Past is Not Our Future. That is what we're going to be doing. After the films have played, we will take a few hands. Maybe some people are interested in the backstory, in the politics and all of that. This is a moment maybe to throw a question to Matthew as somebody who has done extensive research, who has published and made films on the politics of Walter Road. So, comrade, that is the short program of the day. After that, we can have refreshments and, 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 and go home. Without wasting any time, comrade Vus, please come forward, Koban. <coughs> I take it more, the message is almost ready. <laughs> it's hot here, yeah. Can I take off the mask as well? Molwen Comrades Sanbonan Dumelang Apshin Hue Medah Elikaina. My name is Comrade Vusi Mashango. I'm from the Walter Rodney People's Public Revolutionary Library. The naming is deliberate. It must be people's and it must be public. It is not any other kind of a library. Let's take an opportunity and say we thank Chismani and the organizers of the event. For us, as students of Walter Rodney, this is a dream come true. For us, as custodians of Walter Rodney's legacy, this is a dream come true. Finally, someone is taking Rodney to the people. Rodney belonged to the people, not in some shelf, in some university, Rodney, as an activist and as an intellectual, he otherwise linked both intellect and revolutionary activism. It is on those basis that for us to have a Rodney only known by the few only known by the Petty Bourgeois Academia in somewhere in high profile institutions, it became a problem for us. It is on those basis that when we started the project of the Walter Rodney People's Public Library, we said we will take it to the township. It will never be a center based in some area only accessible by those that Rodney didn't represent. 
Rodney represented us, the African working class. We are Rodney. Rodney is us. It is very interesting, comrades. I know some my, of my comrades, they say it's a sentimental question. I happen to share a birthday with Walter Rodney. <laughs> Um, comrades, in preparation to this event, we studied Walter Rodney Speaks. Walter Rodney Speaks because it's very important as we are about to embark on a four-day journey studying how Europe underdeveloped Africa. We must understand who is Rodney, what informed the politics of Rodney, where does it come from, why do we, we, we some of us, regard him as the greatest Pan-African Marxist ever produced by mankind. This book is called Walter Rodney Speaks. He will explain. Very interesting, in the book, I found, I think it is on, on page 29 of Walter Rodney Speaks, where he relates a story wherein they were doing a similar thing um, with um, Sir R. James when they were in London. Very importantly, she, he explains the most important role that was played by the wife of Sel R. James, Selma James. Very interesting. You know what was that role? That role was ensuring that before any other text is read, the context is understood. For an example, um, some of oh, you comrades are Marxist. What is to be done? Why was it written? What year was it written? What was happening internationally at the time to give the context to the readers so that they understand as they embark in a journey of reading. I hope as we are about to embark on these four days of studying how Europe underdeveloped Africa, we'll read and study the context in which how Europe underdeveloped Africa. My comrades, um, we went out of our lengths to reach out to the family. It's a journey that started about four to five years ago. Currently, we are happy to say we get hold of uh, the wife of comrade Walter Rodney, who is a comrade in her own right is Comrade Patricia Rodney. We had wanted her to join us, even if it's in these visual platforms of nowadays. Um, but unfortunately, um, we were unable to do that because you would understand this day, what does it mean to them, the family, and Asha and Shaga and the entire family, how it means. She therefore requested that she sends us a recorded message of support and solidarity. Maybe during the course of the teach-in, she can join us and we have an engagement with her. That is something that is subject to confirmation. However, uh, once again, as the Walter Rodney People's Revolutionary Library, 
we have a desire of growing outside Gauteng and Pretoria. We would love to grow until we reach townships in the Western Cape. Kaelicha, Wamashu, Siabusa, Kamutititi, throughout the African continent. It is a desire in which Rodney, as a revolutionary intelligentsia, had. I therefore thank you, comrades. I don't know how it works, this technology. They will, they will help us. Thank you very much, comrades. Good morning, good evening to all the participants. I would like to express my appreciation to Visu Malangu of the Walter Rodney's People Revolutionary Library, which was inspired by Rodney's ideas and activism for the invitation to bring greetings from the Rodney family and the Walter Rodney Foundation on the occasion of your teaching entitled Walter Rodney and anti-imperialist politics today to honor the legacy of Walter Rodney, which is being held in partnership with FORGE, a Pan-African progressive left organization during June 13th and the 16th, 2022. Walter Rodney was assassinated on June the 13th, 1980 at 8 p.m. by the Fort Burnham PNC state apparatus. Walter Rodney was 38 years old, a husband and father of three young children. Today, 42 years later, the Rodney family continues to seek justice for Walter and his brother Donald, who were in the car with him when he was blown up by an anti-personnel bomb placed into a walkie-talkie by his assassin, Gregory Smith, who is an agent of the government. In 2014, a presidential commission of inquiry was commissioned by President Donald Ramatar to investigate the killing of Rodney over a two-year process. The work of the commission was aborted when the APNU government came into power in 2016. However, the commissioners were able to produce a comprehensive report eliminating the involvement of the PNC government and state agencies, involvement in the planned and orchestrated assassination of Walter Rodney. Some recent developments include, on June the 10th, 2021, the Attorney General and Ms. Minister of Legal Affairs, Anil Nandal of the current Guyanese government, led by President Ashraf Ali, admitted that it was a state-organized killing and declared to the National Assembly that the government is committed to right this tragic wrong. On June the 4th, 2022, Walter Rodney's tomb and memorial were declared by the National Trust and National, National Monuments. I'm excited to endorse the event which continues Rodney's legacy but it would urge the youth and organizations involved that the best way to honor Rodney is by sharing his strategy of groundings for self-emancipation, human right, and justice for people of African descent, working people, and the mar marginalized globally. In using Rodney's framework, you must apply them to your unique circumstances, community, and national needs. We should not only honor him on his birthday, March 23, 1942, or his assassination, June 30, 1980, but daily as we continue our work through public ed education, organizing, and activism. I would like to use one of Rodney's quotes, which I think is pertinent to your teaching over the next three days, and I quote, Political instability is manifesting itself in Africa as a chronic symptom of the underdevelopment of the political life within the imperialist context. Military coups have followed one after the other, usually meaning nothing to the mass of the people 
and sometimes representing a reactionary reversal of the efforts at national liberation. This trend was well exemplified in Latin American history, so that its appearance in neo-colonial South Vietnam or in neo-colonial Africa is not at all surprising. If economic power is centered outside national African boundaries, then political and military power in any real sense is also centered outside until and unless the masses of peasants and workers are mobilized off an alternative to the system of sham political independence. How Europe Undeveloped 1972. I wish you a successful teaching and look forward to our continued collaboration. Hungera Uku Halali Sela. Thank you. How did that sound? Uh, comrades, without wasting any time, I think uh, let's move to Professor Matthew Smith. Uh, I think Mo, he, he should be joining soon. In 1957. Among the current research projects is a study of the representations and legacies of the Moran Bay Re Rebellion in Jamaica in 1865 and the social history of Jamaican popular music since the 1950s. So that is Professor Matthew Smith. Uh, let me hand over to you, uh, Matthew. Uh, we are about to watch two uh, films that you made. The, our past is not our present, and we will also look at Disturbance 68, because we see these two offerings as very important in understanding the context, you know, and the politics that shaped in terms of how uh, Walter Rodney became such a revolutionary voice and such an influential figure in the thinking about emancipation, not only in Africa, but also in the diaspora. So perhaps you can say a few words before we can watch this, so that as we watch, at least we do get a bit of context 
over to you, Mr. Thank you so much. And again, my greetings to everyone. Um, it is a real pleasure to be here. And thanks to the folks at Sishimani and for in inviting me and um, you know, also the comrades who spoke earlier uh, from the Walter Rodney Library, People's Library. Forget me if I, forgive me if I got it wrong, the Walter Rodney People's Library. Um, it's really important that you're having this event. As Dr. Patricia Rodney just said, it's not only about marking or remembering or thinking about Walter Rodney on June 13th or in March when he, passed, when he was born. It's about applying what Walter Rodney taught in everyday life. And it is something that is very important for people who have emerged from societies that were colonized, that were enslaved, that still cry out and fight really for justice and equality that what Walter Rodney was engaged in and in fact sacrificed his life for is a lesson that can still teach us a lot. My interest in Walter Rodney started very early in my life when I was, I'm from Jamaica, Kingston, Jamaica, when I was a student at the University of Jamaica in the history department, that was when I was first introduced to Walter Rodney. And Walter Rodney loomed very large in my life as he did for the generation that, that studied when I studied because of what he did and because of the impact he had on the society in Jamaica. Walter Rodney was not only a brilliant scholar and a first-rate academic who, as a comrade said earlier, his work, particularly his magnum opus, How Europe Underdeveloped Africa, which I'm very glad to hear that you are reading and will be engaging with over the next four days, because it's one of the most important books of the 20th century. But he was also somebody who wanted all of that teaching to be presented in a way that people could understand. He was never an ivory tower kind of academic. From the very beginning, he always ran away from any kind of presentation of himself or his ideas that could only be locked between the four walls of a university. It was always to be engaged with a wider public. And importantly, very importantly, Walter Rodney always acknowledged that his own knowledge base comes from that reasoning with people outside of the academy. That's what deepened it for him. Walter Rodney inspired me as a student. As a student at the university, I read his works. That's when I got first introduced to them as a teenager. I voraciously read them. The, the uh, book that the comrade had in his hand just a while ago, Walter Rodney Speaks, was in my back pocket throughout my whole university career. Every time I felt challenged by what I was facing, I would pull it out and take guidance and inspiration from it. And when I became a faculty member, a lecturer, a historian, a academic in the same department that Walter Rodney was in as a student, just like I had been, and as a lecturer, just as I was, it was important to me that somehow Walter Rodney's legacy should be told in a way that a new generation in the 21st century could appreciate. And it should be told in a way in which people could understand the making of this great Caribbean African revolutionary that was Walter Rodney. And so that inspired me to do the films that you're about to see. And the films are two short films. And the first one looks at Walter Rodney's life as a student at the University of the West Indies. He was born in Guyana in 1942. He came to Jamaica in 1960 to study, to go to university there. At the time, there was no university in Guyana. So any student in the Caribbean who wanted to study would have to go to Jamaica, wanted to do university studies. Either they would go to England or they go to Jamaica. Rodney chose to go to Jamaica. Rodney's radicalism grew very strongly when he was a student at university. And this film is meant to show you the uh, makings of his coming, becoming a radical revolutionary, uh, uh, academic revolutionary. And this was because a lot of Rodney's natural views about the world were sharpened by events that were happening in the Caribbean at that point in time. And you're going to see some of those events highlighted in the film. They include federation. Now, federation is an important point because in federation, there was the 
idea that all the Caribbean, the British Caribbean islands could come together as one to fight colonialism, that it would become a United States of the Caribbean, if you will. Now, Rodney believed very strongly in this. In fact, some of his, his very first, actually, uh, protests that he did ever in his life was to march in support of Federation. And you're gonna see some of that in the film. Unfortunately, Federation didn't succeed. Federation collapsed in 1961 in Jamaica and Rodney was there at the time of its collapse and it deeply disappointed him. And you get to hear Rodney's reflections as a student, as a 19 year old young man, writing and thinking about Federation and what it meant for the Caribbean. The second big thing that came for Rodney during this, his years was that he was uh, in Jamaica when Jamaica became an independent nation when Jamaica broke away from British colonialism. And that was inspiring for him because for his generation, he believed very strongly that a new future could be born out of independence. But very quickly, as you'll see later on, he felt that that future had been stolen from the youth by the politicians and by a system that was incredibly uh, corrupt and incredibly steeped in a long power struggle that would mark the Caribbean for a very long time. And the third thing that happened to Rodney during this period, which was perhaps the most profound of all of this, was the Cuban Revolution. It had happened just before he came there as an undergraduate. And while he was a student, he had the opportunity to travel to Cuba and to see the revolution firsthand. And as you see in the film, he was deeply inspired by it. It led him into a, a, a course towards Marxism that would become a defining aspect of Rodney's black radicalism. He then goes to, he, he wins a scholarship and goes to London. He studies in London. After that, he goes to Tanzania, where he, where he teaches for one year in Dar es Salaam. And in 1968, he returns to Jamaica as a lecturer. Now, what's really important is that he comes back to Jamaica in 1968 to teach African history. Rodney, as you'll see throughout the whole film, realizes early on that the education he got as a young youngster in Guyana was a colonial education where he was embarrassed when he went to university as a first year student and was asked, write something about Europe and write something about Africa. And he realized he could only write something about Europe. He knew nothing to write about Africa. And it embarrassed him to the point where he committed himself to not only studying Africa, but to involve and integrate Africa into his understanding of the world and into the possibilities that existed for Black people in post-colonial Caribbean. And that was important because he came back to teach African history in Jamaica, but was banned for reasons that you'll see in the second film, which is called Disturbance 68. And the banning of Walter Rodney remains a really watershed moment in the British or what was then well, no, not British, but the English speaking Caribbean, because it was a, a moment in which a citizen from the, from the Caribbean who had been uh, really given to expanding the knowledge of people in the Caribbean was now told that he could no longer uh, teach there and was banned. I'll talk about some of that after the Q&A, which I really look forward to so that we'll have a chance to, to discuss. But for now, I just want to say I'm very pleased again to be here with you and that you're able to view these films and I hope you can view them within the spirit that we've been discussing Walter Rodney so far as part of that experience of using whatever media and forum we have to dialogue with, to engage and to think through the important teachings Walter Rodney has imparted to the world. Thank you. We will join you after the film. And uh, I would also like to thank those that join us on social media. You know, let's mention we're not alone just in this room. There are many more people who are joining us. We want to thank them as well. And uh, we, we will, can we roll, please? I have met brothers and sisters who say that their mother town, quote unquote, is French. Spanish, Dutch, Portuguese, as well as English, which we speak. And because of this, we have a problem of identification. We do not know 
whom we are. And that is why this gathering is of great symbolic importance because it is an act of identification. We are saying that we identify with the African people of the African continent. We are saying that we are an African people. And when we make this identification, have no illusions about the fact that this is a very revolutionary initiative. It is a rejection of every other form of identification which the white society has asked us to accept. Let me draw your attention to something which white universities and white libraries